Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, I just got home today from an exciting hands-on event up at Quality Sewing Vac in Washington. We did the hands-on in Puyallup, and it was a ball. The ladies were a great time, and I got some wonderful questions, and I promised one of the, the participants that I would answer her question on this week's video, and I think we'll all enjoy it. Her question was if she wanted to take lettering and put some of the fun fills in them. Now, here is what you need to understand about lettering. If I come in and I use my text tool, that's up here, that's the T for text. If I use this, grab some text, and I type in, we're going to type in fun, because we had a lot of fun there. So we want to type in the word fun. And I'm going to pick a fun alphabet. Let's see what looks like a really good fun alphabet. We don't want an applique. We just want a neat, good alphabet. I think there's one I like called Holiday. Let's see. Let's come to the H's, if I can still spell. Yeah, I like this Holiday Spirit. So let's bring this in, and let's make it about an inch and a half tall, just for fun. And we're going to put this in here. Now, she wanted, what her, what her whole thing was, is she wanted to take this alphabet and she wanted to fill it with a one of our fun fills down here. She wanted to do a gradient wave. And she said, I can't get it to work. No, you can't. Because when you have letters that you have brought in with the text tool, you are dealing with fonts. You are dealing with hand-punched perfect fonts. And fonts are digitized different and act different from a design. And they have to so that your fonts will stitch out beautifully. So if I did want to do something wild to this, now I can do anything that's available here. I can take this holiday spirit and I could come into the fill category and I could come in here and I could fill it with a cornrow but notice I still don't have even if I fill it with something different a fancy fill one of our standard or fancy fills when you look at the bottom I still can't change it up now I'm going to click away from this and I'm just going to select it just as in a selected. You notice I still don't have any of my icons along the bottom available. That's because this is not a design, it is a font. Now if I wanted to turn it into a design, I could simply right mouse click on it. Let's right mouse click and let's break up the text. Now I've just told this that you are no longer a font. You're now a design and you're going to act like a design. But now notice if I click on it, I can no longer get any of my icons back to work with it as text. And did you notice this is all separate now? Because this is now a design with several components to it. So again, even if I want to play with this, these are all separate pieces. So I could take this piece and say, change it to a gradient wave. Then I could take this piece and change that. But that is not what she was looking at doing necessarily. And this would be a lot of work and it wouldn't look very good. When you got into places like here, it is not going to be attractive. So if you want to use some kind of fun feature like that, what we would do is we would come up here. I'm going to get a new piece of paper. And now I'm not going to go to my fonts. I'm going to go to my true type text. Now this looks like a font because it's in the shape of letters. However, this is vector artwork. So now my software doesn't see it as a font. It sees it as a design in the shape of an A. So let's left mouse click here. And again, I'm going to type in the word fun. I'm going to select 
one of the fonts in my computer and remember we don't always necessarily have the same fonts in our computers. You may have the same as I do because you might have the same programs I do. But generally we have different fonts in our computers. And I'm just going to find something that's, um, let's try this one. I just pick at random. I don't necessarily know what they'll look like anyway. Okay, we're going to take this and again I am going to transform this and I can make this now a lot bigger because I'm not working with a satin stitch necessarily. So I am going to transfer this. I'm going to change the size and I would probably like a little bit fatter letter but we're going to work with this. So now these are actually, I'm going to fit it to screen, this is vector artwork. Now since it's not text, notice everything is available for me along the bottom. Now I could say I want this to be a run stitch. I could come in here and say make this a steel, etc, etc. But what she wanted specifically is to do a color blend and fill this font. So I'm going to select wave color blend. Now I want to show you what's so cool about that. Now this was my wave color blend down here. Now what this is, is it will allow me to blend two colors. It is a gradient and it will, it's a blend. So now notice it's asking me if you don't understand what you could do. Notice we click the category and now everything I can do came up. So I've got linear increasing and decreasing. That's fine with me. But we could do linear increasing in the top color. We could do convex, concave. We could have fun with it. We're just going to leave it like it is. Now I can pick the two colors I want. So let's go ahead and pick maybe a red. And let's come down here and let's see. Maybe I want something. I, I need some contrast here. So I can go ahead and fling through my colors. I think I'll take this gold. Well, maybe even a brighter one. Let's see. Yeah, let's come here and get apricot. Now I've told it I want it to be red and apricot blend. Now the other option you have is the density. Now this is 4.4. Remember, embroidery thread is 4 tenths of a millimeter fat. So the idea is if you have a 4 density, one piece is going to lay down, the needle's going to move over 4 tenths of a millimeter and lay the next piece of thread down. You might want it more open. Maybe you wanted to put some mylar behind it. You know, we've got the designs where they're putting mylar behind the designs and having a very light fill go over. This would be perfect for that. Now, the reason it's at 4.4 is because it is a little wider than the thread because we want that open gradient wave look. But again, you can choose right here. So let's apply this. Now, I'm going to apply and you can see I've got my red and orange and it's going to be farther apart in some places closer to another because we have linear and increasing and linear decreasing so the color is going to work that way now I'm going to come back in here with this gradient fill again let's look at our gradient fill now let's just so we can see for the sake of looks let me all items gradient fill now let's come in here and let's pick, um, we'll go ahead and pick the red, but let's pick something that's a really high contrast down here. Oh, this will be a high contrast. And let's do this, say it's six, just so you get the idea. Now I've got color blend selected. I'm going to apply. Now let's click off and you can see now, you can see that nice contrast in there and it's farther, farther apart. I could make it farther apart, put my mylar under. Let's select it again. Let's select all, whoops. Well, let me just get this one letter and move him back. He was, he moved on me. There we go. Okay, let's select all items. And let's go ahead and we're back with, we want to play with our linear increasing and decreasing. Let's go ahead and put this at four exactly and let's apply. Now you can see it's a lot closer together. So you can take and play with any of these kind of fills down here in your lettering, but you're going to have to pick 
up here you're going to have to make sure that you do your import true type fonts because you want it to be in the shape of a letter but you want to treat it as a regular fill a regular piece of a design so this way you can really customize and have fun with your lettering especially with the holidays coming we've got so many things that we can do to stitch out for gifts and everything I was in the Seattle airport this morning and there's a shop I love there and it's it's an artist shop and I can't remember if it's called fireworks or fire something and it was closed because I was there so early but it had the f a lot of fun cup towels in the window with some of the best things so I look at those and of course I took pictures of them and I'm going to think of all the different fun stuff I could do I could use regular fonts but how fun would it be to do something that looks like this nobody else would have one so you can have lots of fun working through here so Go ahead and play, go ahead and try, and know that you can use gradient fill, you could have used stipple, you could have used cross stitch, you could have used anything in here that I have with my magic buttons down here at the bottom. Could have made it, now obviously we don't like the look of the stipple in there, that just doesn't work. Our cross stitch worked okay. I could turn it into apple stitch, I could turn it into applique, we can just come down, we could use it for embossing. So you can have a lot of fun in here. So bring in some of those true type fonts and play. See what kind of things you can create with Floriani Total Control U. And don't forget to ask your dealer for a demo or go back to our weekly archives and look at our new MDA, My Design Album. It's an absolutely amazing organizing tool and I do have a video on it in my weekly archive so you can go to floriani.myfloriani.club click on your weekly lessons and go into the archive and go ahead and look at the my design album if you haven't seen it so I look forward to seeing you next week and next week what we're going to do is I've had several requests on if I want to create an in the hoop zipper bag how would I do it so next week I'm going to show you that I look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks so much for coming. This is Kathy Quinn. Have a good night.